celebrating the holiday yes. season. Yes. And I am so happy to have my girlfriend, Brett Trapolino. Hello. Back with us. And of course, you couldn't hear us now or see us without Adam Andrus, the hottest, coolest, most <laughs> fabulous sound engineer out there helping us. <clears throat> So um, I also, speaking of fabulous, had yes. the best blowout this morning oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> at the blow dry bar on post yes. so I'm so excited. Um, but talking about things of more substance, I go live to people almost every day on our podcast, uh -huh. and people that come in our store are like, oh, you're so happy. How do you do it? And one of my keys to success is fake it till you make it because some days I'm not <laughs> happy to. some days it's hard mm. but I have had the most incredible journey with COVID and I want to give a shout out someone asked us the last time we were together okay. talking about Thanksgiving he said these two women are their head is in the clouds <laughs> if they think life is good we're in the midst of a pandemic and I want you guys Love to know, you. I know we're in the midst of a pandemic, but I have more joy in my life. I feel that I have the best marriage, the best relationship wow. with my daughter, <clears throat> and the closest group of girlfriends yes. I have ever had in my life mm -hmm. because I've strengthened my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Holy Spirit goes through me. And a big part of that is you and the way you talk about it and the way you ignite me and there's mm. we were just talking to adam about this i've been doing yoga i've been really trying to get into my own self and find happiness and i started meditation a year and a half ago and i couldn't really figure it all out then and then you've just said things to me in a way that i could never process and i want you to know if you're not a christian you do not have to be a christian to listen Correct. to this if you uh -huh. are a christian <clears throat> that makes mistakes me i'm the poster Definitely child me, right here <laughs> um i'm gonna um, even say i'm like brene brown i'm a cussing evangelist because if you know me oh uh, i kind of say bad she words cusses. sometimes i'm a she cusser cusses. but i'm passionate and um but i have faith and i feel like i'm so blessed that my family gave me that i grew up with it but my faith is like blown mm -hmm. up. Um, I went through one of the biggest heartbreaks of my life this year that I didn't really publicly share. And now that I've been through it, I can share it. Mm -hmm. And you were there for it. So let's talk about like what, how, what's, why is being a Christian, how can you find joy in the midst of pain? Because that's what I feel like you've helped me do. Okay. Well, I believe that the scriptures teach that none of us are exempt from suffering or pain, correct? And that pain and suffering actually is a, a tunnel that leads us to where we need to go. Does that make sense? That's and a it's big narrow, pill. It's yeah. narrow and it's dark inside that tunnel. And guess what? It only has room for one. So a lot of times we are forced into these through circumstances or, you know, things that we've done or other people have done to us or just life. But all of it has purpose. And a lot of it is about your perspective. If you can learn to see the good in it, if you can learn to see what is it and ask those questions to yourself in the midst of it. I'm here. I accept that I'm here. I know that it's going to last for a moment. It's not going to be forever. But what is it that I'm supposed to learn from this? What is it that I'm supposed to learn about myself and gain from this? Even in that dark place, there there can be and there will be light. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Tunnel. Have you not seen that? Sometimes I feel like it's a train coming at me, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, now I see it more as a light of opportunity. It, it really is, and it's all. Uh, most of life is about your perspective, and if we can get our minds right, focusing on the right things, um, it's going to be a lot easier. Things are going to make sense a lot quicker. You're not going to keep fighting against what's going on. You're going to accept it. And this is something I've learned to do. I, ha I am divorced. I have eight children. And I have a lot of challenges every day. I have a lot of challenges. And so I have learned to, instead of being anxious and worried and all that stuff that I used, that I used to walk in a lot, even though I was a strong Christian, I believe what the scriptures say, I still suffered from that. I began to ask myself, what... 
what good things can I get out of this for myself? How is this going to make me stronger? Instead of being a victim to my circumstances, I said, I want this to make me stronger as a human being. So I began to see all these things as, as things that I could overcome. It built confidence in me. There is nothing that you and I can't do. You have to understand that. We wouldn't be in the certain situations and circumstances that we in if, if we were supposed to just fall and fail. There's purpose. If you believe in God or you believe in the universe, then the universe, if you will, or God, that's who I, God, Jesus Christ, is there to move you in a direction that is good for you. Does that make sense? You have to have the mindset like that God is good. So I want to kind of talk about this for a second. Faith. Faith is the seed, if you will, for peace and joy. And isn't that what everybody's looking for? Yes. You can't buy that. You can't. You can't buy peace and joy. Happiness, the distinction, okay, happiness is a great thing. We get happy when we go to a party and all that stuff. When we buy a Birkin, a Chanel bag, (laughs) that makes me happy. (laughs) You get, when my house gets clean, I feel happy. But happiness is temporary, right? Mm -hmm. It comes and it goes and it can be taken away like that, right? Joy is a state of being. Peace is a state of being. That's why we want you to have peace of mind. Peace and joy are something that is given to you and it can It can grow as you continue to pursue your faith. I really do believe that. So what is faith? What is faith? Well, Brene Brown says that she said, I thought faith would say, I'll take away the pain and discomfort. But when it ended up saying, I'll sit with you in it. And I think that's what so many people think. Well, I'm a good person. I'm doing the right thing. Why am I going through this hard thing? Mm -hmm. Why me? And we have this pity party. Mm -hmm. I have had plenty of pity parties, guys. But when you look at it and you say, God is preparing me for something else. The universe is preparing me for something else. There is something I can learn from this journey. And the other thing that you said to me that somehow I never heard before and really absorbed it was you have everything you need inside of you already you do. because God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus has already given it to you and Jesus died on the cross for you. That's right. And that was pretty emotional for me to hear. Wow. I have it in me. I could do this. Yes. I, I can really do this because yes. some days we feel like we can't keep doing it. Oh, absolutely. There's illness. There's loss of finances. There's, um, broken relationships there's so many things in our world that hurt every day every day i do i want to i want to read this scripture because it it means so much to me talking about the suffering and all that stuff but in james chapter one it says count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness let the steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete lacking nothing so Trials have come to mature us. It's time for all of us to grow up and to be mature and to, and to choose to see things in a positive way instead of being negative Nelly all the time. Yes. I mean, Eckhart Tolle, I've, so, okay. I've listened to some of his pieces, and he talks about that journey and Being in the moment, and and another thing that I feel like the Bible says and a lot of other people say is feel the pain. Don't run away from it. Like, embrace it and then let it go. Yeah. Choose to not stay in it. Choose to move through it on to another place. That's right. And be open to the vision that God's giving us. And the other thing you said is he will, you will see and hear what he wants of you next. Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes I liken it to like when you decide you want to buy a white SUV Mm -hmm. and you go somewhere and everywhere you see white SUVs. Mm -hmm. When you make a decision to be really open to what God has for you, he will show you very clearly. He will speak to you. And you know, that is God's heart for us. He wants to communicate with you. He wants to communicate with me. He wants us to know his will. He wants us to feel safe. He wants us to feel loved. He wants us to 
know our purpose. And beyond that, he wants, he wants us to know what his purpose is towards us. Let's talk more about purpose. Yeah. Purpose doesn't have to be this big job that you get a lot of accolades for. Correct. What, how do we figure out our purpose if we don't know it? I think that's a good question. So some of the things that I have done that have helped me Okay. Yes, because you're on a journey. You're I'm, starting. I'm, an, an, I'm on a journey till the day <laughs> I die. I'm still. Uh, yeah, I'm on I mean, a journey. Because someone could look at you and go, "You're a mother of eight, girl. That's your purpose. Correct. But you have this burning desire in you to share. I do to share. I want to encourage people that um, that life is good. That um, life can be beyond what you could ask, think of, or imagine. I after my divorce and the stuff, all the stuff that happened during there. It's like the whole house was burned down and I had to be, I had to start over as a human being from scratch and all the fake stuff that was in me, all the stuff that wasn't necessary needed to go. And it's like I had, my life was being rebuilt again. And as a Christian woman, I found myself, all the, the, the ways that I thought were Christian were not. It was like a, I can't, I'm going to try to explain it to you. Mm -hmm. It was, I tried to be perfect Mm -hmm. I tried to say the right thing all the time and act the right way all the time. And, but it, it wasn't real because inside I was like, I said this last time, it just felt like I was dying inside because God wants us to be real. He wants us to be right where we are. He doesn't want us to be fake. He wants us, if you're going to cuss, cuss. If you're going to, you know what I'm saying? Like he, he doesn't want us to feel like we have to keep hiding behind things in order to show up for our life. And I think that's what, um, it being the Christmas season, yeah. a lot of people consider going to church for Christmas mass or consider a Christmas service. I'm yeah. Catholic, whereas others, and same for Easter, but maybe this year they're not going to be going. But I know a lot of friends have had bad experiences. I'm Catholic, and we had a really tough journey with our church covering up the molestation in the church. Mm -hmm. And in my prior podcast, we even talked to um, the man who wrote Spotlight, Mike Mike Resendez. And Mm -hmm. I, I realized that the church isn't God. The church is man. Man is imperfect. Correct. The laws of the church are also derived from the word of God, but they're not the word of God. Correct. So let's talk about how you could have faith but not be connected to a church. Yeah, well, I think I, I think we were created to live in community. So I think it's important for you to find people um, that you're like-minded with and like-hearted with, mm-hmm. that you connect with, that you can really be vulnerable, vulnerable with and share your life with. And I believe that's church. When you live in community with people who are like-minded and like-hearted, now, if you're a Christian, you're going to congregate with people who, you know, believe in Jesus, right? And you're going to share the scriptures together. You'll break bread together. You'll, sh- you'll do life together. So that's what I consider church. It's community. It's community. Meeting in your homes. It's connection. Sharing the same purpose. Being committed. And speaking about the question you asked a minute ago, just purpose, I think one of our greatest purposes is finding yourself again is finding amen to that yes and that's what this podcast is about living the authentic life and that's why i've chosen to have you come back and not just be a guest that comes on once and then you move on your way but it's such a part of purpose i feel like the walk that you make through life and what you believe in spiritually yes I do like the rituals of church, so I've continued to be Catholic because it's part of my heritage. It speaks to your spirit. And and, and that's the way I get to God. And I look at my relationship with church like I look at it as my family. I could see all the fault in my fabulous family, but I can see all the fault in myself, and, and then we can move through it. But you don't have to have that to get... To heaven. That's another thing that I found so interesting is your perspective. As a Catholic, we sort of have all these things we need to do, and your perspective on faith and your relationship with God and the way you get to heaven is well, different so, than these acts. Well, it's beautiful. I mean, I the scriptures teach that, you know, 
we get right with God, we get, we get right with God by receiving the gift of who Jesus Christ is in our life. We don't, we don't do all these good works to make ourselves right with God. God did it for us by sending us Jesus Christ because no one is perfect, no, not one. No one is perfect. But Jesus is, was the perfect one that represented and represents all of humanity. And he took all of our sins on the cross, our shortcomings, our sins, you name it, past, present, and future, every single human being, he bore that on the cross himself for all of us. And he, when he hung on that cross, he said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. And now whoever wants, whoever will receive him as their savior has full access to God the Father 24-7. It's amazing. And he also said, God, forgive them because oh, they know not what, what they, they do. do. And that has been Huge. the biggest part of my faith journey. Yes. The hardest part yes. of my faith journey yes. is forgiving those who don't ask, forgiving those who I feel wronged me. Oh. And finding out how to let go of that pain. And you said something really beautiful um, about your heart is just too special to carry around that pain with you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about forgiveness. We're going to be I those of that. us who are getting with our families. Yes. We talked about this a little bit before on our Thanksgiving yes. podcast. But how do we forgive someone who's hurt us but is in our family and we're going to see? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to back up just for a second and say um, one of the greatest gifts aside from my salvation and knowing where I stand with God is that I could truly now forgive myself. I truly have been able to forgive yes. myself. And I have made so many mistakes. I've made so many mistakes in my life. And a, a lot of the guilt, I mean, it was on me, the guilt, um, condemnation, you know, for, for uh, of what was just stayed on me. And it really affected the way I lived my life. It affected the way I saw myself. And it, and, it, and it didn't allow me to fully be myself. To, it just, I was hiding under that. But when I came to that realization that I could really just forgive myself for those things and let it go, I, that's when I really started to grow. So forgiveness is key. Forgiving yourself first, right? Receiving that from God, forgiving yourself first, and then um, offering that to other people freely. We have freely been forgiven. Now, again, we talked about this last time. Yes. If we could just forgive everybody that has ever hurt us and let it and let it go, mm -hmm. just imagine that for a second. What would that feel like? If you could just really forgive everyone that has hurt you, your children, your spouse, your sister, your brother, your parents, and just let it go, how would how would that feel? So freeing. It would feel so freeing, but sometimes people, including myself, I was almost addicted to that emotion of I don't want to forgive I, I can't forgive because something has to replace it when something goes something has to replace it does that make sense does that sound weird so if you forgive and you're and you sometimes we like feeling angry we like feeling you know having a chip on our shoulder I know that sounds weird but we can get addicted to negative emotions have you thought about that I haven't but it's true I it's mean they true. feel they Fuel your vision. And sometimes, I mean, for a while, that was my purpose. Like I, and that's kind of jumping forward to worthiness, but some of the reasons that I worked so hard to mm -hmm. achieve certain goals in business or in charity or whatever it was, was for the good of doing it, but also that I could say, okay, now I'm worthy of love or right. now I'm worthy of God's grace or now and to realize that we don't have to do anything to be worthy right we don't is other than have an open and joyful heart but we are asked to utilize the gifts he gives us yes the forgiveness so i would say first of all forgive yourself and how do you practice forgiving other people how do you practice you have to practice forgiving people i have to this sounds so crazy but my children will you know do something and I'll it'll hurt me and I have to in that moment just I forgive them and, and I, I read this them. 
I I sent this to Bella last night because she's having a hard time with mean girls at school, mean okay. guys, just being an eighth grader. Yeah. And it's about forgiveness. And it says, I choose to forgive, not because you deserve it or have stopped what caused the hurt. I forgive you for myself. I choose to move on and accept who you are. However, that does not mean I forfeit the pain caused or ever let it happen again. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who don't forgive someone because they were abused or it's not yeah. healthy. And God does not want you to be in unhealthy situations. No. And I was so blessed that when I was married before and when I went to meet with a priest to talk about my marriage, he suggested that it was not of God. And then the second priest I met with told me the same thing. So I was very blessed to have that forgiveness from someone in authority. But we don't always all get sure. that in Abs our journey. So absolutely. we have to forgive ourselves. Absolutely. And then also the person who wronged us. Absolutely. And the thing is, if you're in an un if you're in an unhealthy relationship or an abusive situation, you can forgive the person, but you need to remove yourself from the situation. Absolutely. That doesn't mean you don't forgive them. You need to just get, protect yourself. That's, and that's a what, big difference. And you've talked a little bit about that or a lot about that with me, but maybe we can mention it. There's a difference between judgment and discernment. So we're not condemning those who hurt us. No. But we're discerning that that behavior is not acceptable. acceptable. And we don't repeat it ourselves in other situations. And we don't tolerate it. And that's part of, you know, loving yourself is saying no to things that are not good for you. Is saying no to things that are hurtful. It's boundaries. It's saying no. And then another thing you recommended in our Bible study uh -huh. this week, which is so hard for me. Okay. And Nadine, if she's I think she's listening. Oh. We discussed this is to bite our tongue. When someone says something that we know is wrong, mm. but there's someone we love and we want to show them that we know what's right and tell them <clears> and how if it's not of God, we're not supposed to say it. And this this arguing, I think it's all I mean, I just feel like with our busy season and thank God we're busy at the office, but like everything yeah. in my house feels like it's cranked up at the highest level mm -hmm. of stress. So you just barely touch someone and you're going to get mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the avalanche to come. Like how do we manage that in this yeah. really intense season too? I, again, I think you have to go back and you have to, you have to, you have to nurture yourself. You have to figure out what it is that you need. What is it that you need to stay calm, to have clear vision, and to stay on your path and not get in someone else's lane? Does that make sense? Journaling, all, journaling always helps. And so, again, I, I say this a lot, but having time to yourself, even if it's just 15 minutes to get your mind right in the morning, to get your heart right, to set your intentions, to read something that inspires you, pray, meditate, are essential to... Um, keeping your nervous system in a good place, keeping your mind focused and clear, and just staying calm. And, and, and Because what is the goal? We don't want to be acting out of control. We don't want to just be re reacting to everything. We want to be responding. We want to be responding in grace and in truth and love. Um, we want to be a part of the holiday cheer, right? Absolutely. So we get together with our family member and or we're trying to figure out if we are getting together. Mm -hmm. I know we had this discussion at Thanksgiving. Who's mm -hmm. taking a COVID test? Who's not taking a COVID test? Mm -hmm. Whose COVID test is real? Whose isn't? And I had to remind myself of my purpose. And I've mentioned this several times, but my brother... And his family, we had all just taken a break from one another for a while. And we were trying to decide if we were going to St. Thomas for Thanksgiving uh -huh. and coming back and quarantining and all this. And it got into this whole big discussion. And I had to keep reminding myself of my purpose. And my purpose is to be united with my family in peace. Mm. So I took responsibility mm -hmm. for all of the behavior. And I said... I'm sorry, 
I'm sorry if I hurt anyone. I'm sorry if I've said anything. We'll do whatever it takes for everyone to feel comfortable. And it doesn't matter who's right or wrong, but right. sometimes we have to focus and we have to do that in our marriages. And I think we have to do it with our teenagers too. Absolutely. But you took the time to set that intention. You took the time to say, this is what I want and this is what I'm going to do. And then you walked in that. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. And I think that that's a big part. That's a big of, part of it. Of faith also is believing that it will all be okay. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to perspective. Having that positive perspective on life and cultivating that. And that will produce joy. Yes, that will produce joy. Because if we try to minimize the pain and the arguments and the frustration, I mean, you even said this, quarreling is not of God. No, 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 no. no. Fighting, angry words, all, none of that. And I'm Italian. Sometimes I need to raise my voice and use my hands to <laughs> show what I'm thinking. Right, right, right. <laughs> of course. But words are, the, words are the main thing that really tick people off. You know what I'm saying? Saying a sharp word or don't, you're not saying it in the right way or you say it disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? The words are what. So that's why we're to be careful with our words. So this past week when we were in Bible study, Amy had that little post-it thing, which I love. And it said, before you speak, let your words pass through these three gates. Remember that? Yes. Is it, is it true? Is it necessary? And is it kind? Is it true? Is it necessary? Is it kind? And I think that is profound to me. Just think if we actually did that, how that would change the atmosphere of a lot of our homes. And then the scriptures say in James, be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Ooh. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. That's pretty powerful. It is. Right? And the Bible talks a lot about the tongue, right? That we need to put a guard on our tongue because with our tongue, we, we curse people and we bless people. But life and death are in the speaking, in your words. Your words have weight. So that's another thing I would encourage everyone is be careful what you say. Be careful what you speak, how you say it. Be thoughtful about that because your words are like seeds, are they not? And they go into people's hearts. How many times has somebody said something to you and you you'll it'll it could even be a week later maybe two weeks later and you you keep thinking about what they said it keeps creeping back in right. your head i know so words are words are important so i just think that is something we could take with us during during this holiday season okay so mm -hmm. you were saying it's such a beautiful day look around there's so much beauty mm -hmm. and i said it's such an interesting perspective because so many people i talk to say everything's falling apart the world is sick and the pandemic and the division over politics and so many different things so how do you how are you an educated person yeah that can say the world is beautiful like how do we get that every morning when we wake up mm -hmm. what are you well my mind is set also on things above not just on this earth, right? So I know my mind is set on what is coming. So I have that perspective too. So when I see what's going on in the world, yes, it's painful. Yes, it's bad. Some of it's bad. Yes, it's scary. Yes, it's that. These are things that are out of my control, right? There are, a lot of this is out of our control. Mm -hmm. The one thing that you can control is your own life. You can't control what's going on in Washington. You can't control what's going on in, you know, Florida. You can't control these things, but you can control your life. And just think of it. If everybody just focused on making their life so beautiful and cultivating a perspective of hope and gratitude and joy and love, that's what changes the world is one person at a time like that. Does that make sense? Completely. And I, I also go back to the serenity prayer of God. Do you remember it? I can't yeah, remember the like, detail of it. Help, help me know me the, the difference between the, um, or God help me 
Um, Here, let me look it up. Keep talking. Um, understand what I can I change and what I can't so I can accept the journey that I'm going through. Yes. And I think that that's such a big part because sometimes we get so focused on something. Like there's that other saying where um, sometimes you realize you you are knocking your head against a door and you've just got to go around it and go to something else because you're never going to open it. I think that we just get stuck in our way sometimes. Well, exactly. But you can, you need, to, we need to choose joy. We need to choose, think about the kind of person that you want to be. You just think about it. If you write it down, what kind of, what kind of characteristics, what kind of traits, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the first thing on my list, I want to be a positive person. I want to be a thoughtful person. I want to be an intelligent person. Okay. Why is seeing the world in a positive light good for you, good for your, even your physical well being? Why? Because there's certain chemicals that go off when you are positive that create the good stuff in your body mm -hmm. that help keep you from, you know, an, a low immune system. There's a whole bunch of things that happen when you choose to see things differently in a positive light. No, abortion is bad. It's wrong. Murder is wrong. The, the pandemic is, this is hard for everybody. But all you can control is your own life. Make your life the best life. Make it what you want it to be. Be the person that you always dreamed of. We are, we are capable of change. That's the beauty of it. We don't have to stay the same way. That's why it's hard for me when I hear people say, oh, that person will never change. Well, guess what? You can change if you want to change. That's exciting to me. You don't have to stay the same way. So the serenity prayer is this. You ready? Mm-hmm. Um, it's God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the, the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And the wisdom to know the difference. That's pretty cool. Because there is so much to wisdom. Right. Uh, let's talk a little bit, too, about worthiness. Because yeah. that's something, um, as a mother of a 13-year-old, you've been working with Bella. And yes. you've been helping her understand worthiness. And I'm reading um, a book. Uh, now I can't remember the name of it. They recommended it in Bible study about um, it's help oh, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. your mom um, <laughs> call. Ah, I keep having brain we'll farts, but I will figure it out. But um, Brene Brown says regarding worthiness, you either walk into your story and own your truth or you live outside of your story hustling for your worthiness. Mm. And I, I certainly, I love the fact that I can hustle in business, but I feel like I was almost on this hamster wheel trying to get worthiness from everyone around me. And I feel like COVID knocked me off the wheel mm -hmm. and I kind of had to like figure out my bearings of what I was doing and I think so many people are kind of in that place now. Like, okay, well, I used to be able to reconnect with friends. I used to be able to travel. I used to be able to do this. Like, what can I do to fill all that? Mm. And thankfully, I was connected to this group of women that we could work together to learn so much about what's there. And then I realized what I loved about traveling was taking time. Mm. For yourself. For myself and being with my family, relaxing or having long dinners with friends. And I thought, well, why can't I take those moments mm. and incorporate them into my life mm -hmm. now? Mm -hmm. And I think because it's a new year, if we look at sort of our vision of what we want, our vision of what we want in life. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this with um, Anshal Bhatti of the mm -hmm. Sydenham Clinic. I see this in our walk with Christ, too, our walk with God, too. If we, he wants us to achieve. He it does. is, and I, I've does. also learned recently, it's okay to pray for success, success. or wisdom or mm -hmm. knowledge or yes. understanding. An, absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about that, that we can turn to God for meaning. Oh, absolutely. I think he, he's the one that gives us meaning right? 
I mean, I believe the scriptures teach that we, it's a, he, kn- he knew us before we, we, we were even created. We've always been in the mind and heart of God. We've always been in his mind and his heart. And so he has great purpose. And I think if we can, if we can tap into those deeper truths, then we're going to begin to s- derive our worthiness from that. Mm-hmm. And our worthiness doesn't come from what we do. You know that. Like our worthiness doesn't come from these external things. Our worthiness comes because we're here. We're, we're, we are created in the image and likeness of God. And we have the absolute uh, capacity to reveal what he's like on the earth. He made us representatives, so to speak, of who he is so people could see what God is like. So we're part of him. We have worthiness because we are part of him. Does that make sense? I keep saying that a lot. It, but it it's does. not about what you do that makes you worthy. What 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 makes well, what would your definition be of worthiness? I think part of what he wants us to do is live to our full potential, which means taking care of ourselves. Okay, yes. Yes. Which yes. means like sleeping, eating healthy, mm-hmm. working out, and keeping ourselves balanced. I mean, I've really, I feel like I'm closer to God through That's yoga. That's what we do on this realm. Correct. But that's how we live it out. That's how it's played out. Or, you know what I'm saying? That's how it's revealing itself, is how you take care of yourself. Because you are a gift. Every human being, once you realize that you are a gift and you get to share yourself with the world, you're going to take care of that gift. And I also, I realized, I just looked up the name of the book. is called Love Her Well. Okay. <laughs> and it's because um, I had to figure that out. But um, the other thing I've realized is I can be a better mother, daughter, wife, leader in our business if uh-huh. I take care of myself Correct. as though I really am a child of God. And I appreciate the body that he gave me and I take time to nurture it Mm -hmm. and to feed it with positive healthy people in my life that's right that's key that's why I talked about earlier community choose wisely the people that you want in your life because you know as you commune together you get wired together right you pick up on different traits of one another so surround yourself with positive great people not perfect but positive people they don't have to think like you you know per se they don't have to think like you or look like you or any of that but surround yourself with people who do feed your soul and i have been doing researching so much on my ted talk that um uh, on connection and my what i've really come to realize is that connection is Seeing and hearing people where they are without judgment. Mm. Say that again. Say that again. Seeing and hearing people where they are without judgment. We can have discernment. We can say that their choices are different than us. And we can have different disagreements. Yes. But we see and hear them without judgment. And I guess that's why I feel so connected to God now is Growing up Catholic, I just felt like I was being judged by God constantly. Mm. I felt like Mm -hmm. I wasn't worthy of him, like that I was ashamed. I was clothed in shame, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. going back to Brene Brown, for making bad decisions, for not being consistent, for saying one thing and maybe choosing Mm -hmm. another. And now, instead of living in shame, I kind of own it. I think that's part of this authenticity walk. Mm -hmm that I'm trying, I own the imperfection and I ask those around me for forgiveness and grace. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to give people around me grace as much as I want to be given grace. That's right. And I think that's another part of the season is for those we love and we're going to spend the holidays with is giving grace. Giving grace, which, which is giving people what they don't deserve freely. Can we talk about grace? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you have an experience, so that you know, that's people say, "What's what's so amazing about grace?" It is a, it is the free gift that God gives us. He 
takes your stuff and he gives you his stuff. Forgiveness, mercy, love, acceptance. He takes your sin. He takes your shame. He takes your guilt. He wants it. He's like, give it to me. And in exchange, I'm going to give you grace. And in, within grace is all that stuff that every human being longs for in their heart. And that's what everyone's looking for. That's what makes us whole and complete and not lacking in anything is that grace. And when you really receive it in your heart, and then you're able to, I think everything else follows suit after that, then you're able to forgive people. Then you're able to, um, to experience authentic joy. Then you're able to walk in peace. Then you're able to take care of yourself and love yourself. Then you gravitate in the right, you gravitate towards the right people and the right people gravitate towards you. It's a whole internal shift that happens. And it comes from God. And it is the gift of God. And so that's what I would say before we end today, you know, is that I would encourage everyone, if you don't know God and you don't know about God's goodness and his grace in your life, ask him. He will show you. He's, he longs for every human being to know him and to have a relationship with him. He is the one that will never leave you or forsake you. He doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so I think for me, that's where I find my purpose. That's where I have come to know who I am in the eyes of who he is. So my faith, my faith is what has given me the stability to keep going on with um, the anticipation that good things are coming. So when you know the character of someone, you rest in that character, right? Even if you don't know what they're doing, you know their character. Well, when you know who God is and his character, you can rest in, in things that you don't understand that are happening or what's going to happen. You can rest in his goodness. So I would say, if you don't know God, just ask him. I remember when I was going through a super hard time when I was in college, and it seemed like everything was falling apart. And I just looked up and I said, God, if you're real show me. It was just that simple prayer, right? And it was not long after that, probably within the next hour, just he began to open my eyes and, and really encourage me. I'm here. I have a plan for you. I have a purpose for you. And I'm helping you get on that path. And through many tears and suffering and trials, I found that path, but it wasn't without suffering. And all the things that have happened in my life have brought me to this place, and I'm grateful for that. And just remember, life is short. The scriptures say it's just but a breath. You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? All we have is today, so make today good. Remember, all you can control is your life. You can't control anyone else, what's going on in the world, but you can control your life, and you can choose today to make your life great. And and and, and it starts with with finding out who you are, learning to love yourself. And, and then that way you'll be able to love other people well, right? So joy, the acronym joy, everybody, you know, it's Jesus, others, you. Is that right? Jesus, other, you. But I'm kind of seeing it as it's Jesus, take care of yourself, and then you can really love other people. I walked in that, exhausting myself, always trying to take care of other people, always trying to make sure... But then God began to show me, you're missing, you're missing something. How can you love your neighbor as you love yourself if you don't even love yourself? Jesus said that. So I began to say, okay, I need to pull back, put some boundaries up for a while, and really learn to love myself and know myself, know my own heart, know my own desires. You know what I'm saying? Know my own faults, know my own shortcomings before I go out and try to love other people well. Love yourself well, and then you can love other people well. And one of my favorite uh -huh. uh, Bible readings, and I won't be able to recite the exact one. But you never know. Jeremiah, okay. and he said, uh, I have plans Let for you yes. for hope and a future. And I... Um, Jeremiah 29, 11. And I think that when we have hope, I think so many of us are just holding on to that calendar changing for 2021. And... 
I wanted you to come today so we would have something to turn to because we have this hope that 2021 is going to change. But unless we change that's right. us on the inside, that's right. it's going to be the same. It will continue to look like a pandemic. It will continue to look bad. So, yes, you are absolutely correct. The, the verse, I'm going to read the verse to you. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, God says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare, plan, not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. God wants you to seek him. So my encouragement to you as you are going into the new year and then um, holidays and into the, the new year, set your intentions. Try something different. Maybe pursue God and see if you don't know God. Maybe, okay, God, I'm seeing what these women are talking about. They sound crazy, but I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm hearing something there. Um, maybe try God. Um, ask him. Start seeking something deeper and more meaningful than the things that you just see because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So maybe try seeking things and looking for things that are not um, uh, so temporary. Maybe this could be a year of going deeper, learning to love yourself, know yourself, the possibility that there could be this amazing and awesome and wonderful God that loves you and has provided everything that you need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Um, I'm saying to you, this whole year, there's so many beautiful things that await us. And the only reason why I can say that is because I have kept the fire burning internally. I have chosen to see things differently. So you can watch the news all day and you can be depressed, right? And negativity, and it does lower the frequency in your body. Or you can choose to surround yourself with positive things and boost yourself up and just watch what happens. Just do an experiment and see what happens. Instead of you know getting angry at yourself and saying, I'm so stupid, why did I do this again? Maybe you know changing some self-talk, try there. Being aware of how you talk to yourself first, right? Because how you talk to yourself and how you feel about yourself often is projected onto other people, right? So I, I think I just want to encourage you that you don't have to stay the same, that truly the Bible does teach that good things, good things await for those who want them, who are open to them. And when you seek God with all your heart, he says, you're going to find me. You're going to find me. He is waiting. He's waiting. Well, thank you, Brett. Merry Christmas thank to everyone. You. Happy holidays. Yes. Happy Hanukkah. Happy life. life. Happy life, right? Yes. <laughs> and Happy New Year. We are taking a break, and we will be back to you on January the 7th. Nice. Uh, my birthday, Carla Woo-hoo! Valencia, is going to be coming in. She is such a talented um, designer who puts her funky spin on classic bags and was that the strap bag you straps? Me? Okay, those yes. are in- incredible. And then the next week, January fourteenth, we're doing a forum, the Living the Authentic Like First Forum. Yay! And uh, we'll be having on Shabbatia, and um, Brett will be joining us, and we're going to have a charity joining us from Houston Twenty. And we're uh, having a shopping event because you, be uh, you can get together with friends. We're doing it at the Sydenham Clinic. Uh, it'll be um, a live broadcast. It will be a private podcast at 10 that morning. But then you can come by and meet Brett and shop. I would love that. From 1-4. <laughs> so um, thank you to everyone. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Um, it's been an incredible journey, an incredible year. And God bless all of you. Thank you for listening today.